All right, let's start. So welcome everyone to the fifth talk in the College Talk series hosted by Inflow Communications. Today we have Akhil and Siddharth, both students at NYU Stern to talk about their college application journeys. Welcome Akhil and Siddharth, we're glad to have you. The College Talk series is a set of Zoom webinars hosted to increase the average high school student's exposure to and knowledge of the college search and application process. We are thus bringing in students from various prestigious universities from around the world to share with you their experiences. Before we begin, I'd like to set down some rules. Please have your microphones muted and videos off throughout the meeting. Refrain from annotating on the screens. And lastly, post all your questions in the chat box. They will all be posed to our speakers in the later part of our talk. Once again, thank you for joining us. Akhil and Siddharth, you guys can take over now. Thank you. Um, hey guys, so my name is Akhil and um, uh, my name is Siddharth. Uh, we're both students at NYU Stern. Uh, we're both doing the BS in business program um, as opposed to the BPE program, which is another um, major that you would you know, declare before you apply to Stern. Uh, we're, we're roommates. I'm from Bangalore, Sid's from Hyderabad. And, um, you know, I, I was born in, like, a little bit about myself, I was born in New Jersey, uh, moved to, um, moved to Bangalore, like, you know, um, middle, like, around, like, fourth grade, third grade. Then I, I've been there ever since. Um, I did my high school at Greenwood High International School in Bangalore. Um, I did the IB program. And uh, I, I only applied to five universities because I got into NYU, which I, you know, because I applied ED1 to NYU. So I got in December and didn't really need to apply anywhere else. Um, yeah, that's all about me, Sid. Yeah, so I was um, born in the Bay Area in California. And I was here till 2013. In grade six, I moved to India. And similar to Akhil, I did the IB program as well in my high school years. I did my uh, IBDP graduation at Chirac International in Hyderabad. And I moved back for university. Um, yeah, so let's just get started. So what NYU is known for at least now the find there is of course like Stern for its business program, especially finance and um, accounting, entrepreneurship. And they've introduced a whole bunch of like dual degree programs. So you can get the, you have a BS in business and BFA from Tisch, which is like, you know, a bachelor's in films and arts. You have the BS MS program, which is bachelor's in accounting and a master's in accounting, which is for only one extra summer. Then they recently introduced this BS and BTE program, which is um, BS in business and bachelor's of technology and entrepreneurship. Um, and of, co of course, it's known for Tish for its film programs and drama and writing programs. And most of our well-known like alumni are from Tish. We have like what Dan um, Donald, Glo Donald Glover and like Lady Gaga and um, a couple other like big time celebrities come from Tish. Um, they have a, they have really really good psychology and philosophy programs at the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, then the Gallatin School of Indiv Individualized Study is something NYU is especially known for. Where if you don't know what you want to major in, or you know you want to major in something super super specific, you can go to the Gallatin School of Individualized Study and basically design your own major depending on the courses that you want to take and the courses that you find interesting. Uh, it's just, you know, it's literally individualized study, just study for yourself. And NYU is really well known for its study abroad program. We have satellite campuses like all across the world. We have satellite campuses in, in Accra, in Abu Dhabi, in Shanghai, uh, London, Prague, Paris, Florence, Washington DC, LA, and a couple other places. And um, you can go study there anytime you want, any at any point throughout your throughout you know your four years for no extra cost. You're just paying how much you'd pay if you're just studying in New York City. Uh, we have something called IBEX and ISP, which uh, so IBEX is this program where it's a business exchange program. So you can go study at uh, schools like LSE or HCUST uh, for their business programs, and something called ISP, which is this really, really cool thing NYU does in, or Stern does in it's the end of the junior year, in like spring of your junior year, 
you basically do a very concentrated study into a company that's based either in Europe, Asia, or South America. And, you know, you look at various aspects, you look at like the economy of that country, you look at the finances of that company, you know, do a lot of study into that company. And then for three weeks, um, again, towards the end of your spring, you'll, you'll actually go to that country, which NYU will take you to, and you'll participate in like, you know, walking around in that economy and part and like interviewing people in that company and generally getting a more real world um, perspective of how to study business. And, you know, you got to go to cool places as well. I think this, like last year, like before it got canceled, they were going, they were going to go to um, Mongolia and some other places I forgot but uh and we're also very 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 large school um just our undergraduate population is 51,000 people and we're the we're the largest private school um you know in the in the United States uh and we have a bunch of internship opportunities for various things because we're in New York City like Wall Street is like 20 minutes away and like um like Madison Avenue or wherever what that wherever like fashion 10 minutes away it's like and we're on fifth avenue so everything's right here just tons and tons of internship opportunities and so do you have anything you want to add on yeah i think just going off the fact about internships it all depends on the fact that we're in the heart of new york city uh being in nyc was one of the primary reasons why i applied and i'll be talking about that uh later on in this presentation but most people refer to the East Coast as the financial hub um, well, of the world sometimes, if not just the United States of America. And being in a school like NYU, given the alumni network, given the fact that this school has been around for employers to look at um, for, for the longest times, employers have seen the sort of students that New York University professors turn out. Um, they are very, very interested and engaging with New York University students. And it gives us the opportunity to reach out whenever, be it in your freshman year, all the way up to your uh, third being your junior year, looking for internship opportunities. Employers will be more than ready and willing uh, to take a bet on an NYU student being a good, good hire. And I think that that's really important when it comes to universities in general, because any university across America, they they will be telling you to take advantage of the location. And NYU's location being in NYC is one of the best aligned places to be because whatever it is you choose to do in NYU, be it from liberal arts, from the writing program to Tisch for arts and film or, or business and finance, there's absolutely every resource you would require outside the university in the city. Uh, between the people and the industry and companies, et cetera. So I think that it's not only really motivating, but it's also accessible and it makes it very practical and viable for students to be very ambitious with what they choose to do with their time in New York City. Yeah, that's true. Like, again, um, before I jump into, before I go later on in the presentation where Sid and I talk about ourselves, um, I just want to say that, you know, what makes NYU so cool is that being in New York City, you don't need to only specifically intern during your winter break or summer break. Like, I don't know, in most schools that I was applying to then, uh, there wasn't really any potential for me to, you know, do my schoolwork and work on internships at the same time because these, these schools were so far away from places where I could get any sort of internship. But New York City being as diverse as it is, as it is and NYU being downtown, you can, you can do internships throughout the year. That's something I find really, really cool because you get like work experience like all through while you're studying. You know, uh, you don't need to just reserve your summer break or winter break. Like, okay, now I'll look for internships. You can do it literally any time you want. It's pretty cool. Um, okay, so these are this is these are my statistics. Um, in IGCSE, I got seventy stars in two A's. Um, I took. I, mean, I think my subjects are really important. I just took like basic math, physics, chemistry, bio, uh, econ, that kind of thing. Then my 11th finals, I got a 36 on 42 in IB, uh, six is all around. Not necessarily too great, but it's okay. Um, predicted, I got 38 on 42. Um, again, this was definitely was not the most competitive score. Uh, I don't think, like I definitely wasn't like top 10% in my 
batch, but it's okay. Then my stat super score was 1570 on 1600. I got 1490 the first time I took it in October, and I got 1540 the second time I took it in March. So totally, I got um, 1570 on 1600. And my subject stats, I got an 800 in my math level two, and my 750 in my physics. I'm um, like, to, like personally, when I was applying to all these universities, I found that um, SAT score, or you know, at least to my knowledge, SAT scores are like super, super, super important. Um, like definitely high school grades are definitely up there in terms of how important they are when schools look at you as a candidate. But you really need to focus on your SATs as well because this is like the most. Um, it's literally just standardized testing. Like everybody takes the test, so your score really shows how you perform with respect to everybody else who's applying to the schools that you're applying to. Because at the end of the day, high schools are very different, right? Like my 11th finals were all like my papers, like my school's papers. They're different from what Sid, like from the papers that Sid was given. And there are papers from like another IB school in Mumbai, the papers that they'd be given. So because they're so like, you know, like schools don't really know how or how much they can trust the grades that are given to them just from high school. So the SAT is the way they can kind of standardize things. Like, okay, yeah, this guy is like, the SAT is definitely flawed, don't get me wrong, but it's the best form of saying, it's the best form of, I guess, showing the competitiveness of one candidate with respect to everybody else. Because um, yeah, a lot of schools are moving away from it, but when you guys are applying, they're not going to. So definitely focus on your SAT. Um, Sid, I'll just move on to yours. Yeah, and just to add on, um, the reason why uh, some schools are moving away from the SAT is in light of uh, a post-COVID-19 world. Uh, the dynamic of competition, the way we know it, is changing because students no longer have that easy access to examination centers. So the SAT is no longer mandated by NYU as well. Uh, for the next year, for next year's incoming batch, uh, the SAT will not be mandatory. I'm not sure if that will be the case uh, for years from that point forward. Um, you should write it, in my opinion. I would still recommend writing it. It's definitely a benchmark to have, unless, of course, you have no testing center open. Uh, but like Akhil said, it is the best form of, as the name says, standardized testing that, um, that universities can rely on. So I didn't do too great in my IGCSE boards uh, as compared to most students and applicants to a University of NYU's caliber. I got four A stars, four A's and two B's between 10 subjects. And I just wanna put it out there that one of my B's was in economics and I'm currently, well, in the business school. So for those of you who think that, you know, get in a slightly subpar grade in a subject related to your major that it's all over for you. Well, I can tell you that it's not. Uh, I was disappointed, but as you can see, it's, it all depended on what I chose to do in Ivy. And in Ivy, my scores were considerably better. I took math, econ, and physics, HL. I took chemistry, Spanish, and English, SL. Um, my, it's out of 42 because uh, TOK and extended essay wasn't accounted for in our predicted. My SAT, I wrote it once. I got a 1560. Subject SATs, 800 in math, 790 in physics, as you can see. Colleges usually recommend you write at least two subject sets. That's the most common norm and you'll see it everywhere you go. And at least in my experience, I've never seen someone pick their subject SATs necessarily based on their major. People do tend to do it, uh, but I haven't seen it as a steadfast rule uh, because math L2, for example, it's just a standard of math that students are expected to know regardless of what their major is. Um, and I chose physics because it was my best science, but there was, there was nothing telling me that I couldn't have taken uh, American history or psychology or a form of literature as my subject at SAT, even if I was applying to the Stern School of Business. It is merely a benchmark exam to take in any subject to show a university that you are capable of acing or doing well in, in standardized testing. Again, because it is the one best comparative factor between me and the next applicant. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, and also like my subjects as well for IB were um, physics, math, and economics AHL, um, chemistry, English SL, and Spanish ab initio SL. So these are very very common subjects. I'm pretty sure like seventy percent of everyone like, like I don't know all my friends just took the same subjects as me. So it's a very very common 
combination. Okay, uh, we have a this yeah, question like, in the chat. Take yeah, but, yeah. Because we're on it. Um, do these I don't know. I'm, I'm sharing my screen. I can't see the question. All right, cool. Do these universities recognize all Indian boards? Um, this is a, it's a good question, but uh, it's in two parts. Um, the thing with, with Indian boards is that we being students in the country and studying under these boards, we know that there's a certain level of difficulty. Uh, we put in a certain sense of effort to actually do well. Uh, but there's an issue amongst American universities when it comes to the trust factor in a lot of examinations that we present through CBSE or state syllabus, et cetera. And I think um, the problem there is that we may genuinely score well, you as a CBSE student may genuinely do well in your 10th boards and then your 12th boards. But there's a certain sense of trust that I don't think American universities have built yet. Um, of course, they're never going to say it out loud, but it's just a matter of making sure the rest of your application is as rock solid as it can be. Again, the SATs being one form of doing that. Uh, it is true, they do recognize all Indian boards. Uh, there's no university that will deny the validity of any country's local education system. It's just a matter of whether or not the university knows the difficulty or the standard of difficulty that that education board presents to you. So if you yourself are not convinced of how well known your education board might be, uh, depending on the area you're from, just uh, accommodate for that with the rest of your application. And you can always use the additional comment section of your um, Common App essay to touch upon what you thought about you know, your syllabus, if you, I mean, your, your education board, if you really thought it's something that might be looked over by universities. Um, that being said, uh, I mean, the, uh, the simple answer is yes, but like, yeah, like definitely the school's reputation is also a really big factor. Like I have friends who like when the CBSE and, you know, got into NYU, like what, like a sophomore right now, his name's Aman, he went to NPS and, you know, he did the CBSE and he got into NYU Stern as well. They do recognize it, but yeah, as it said, definitely utilize the extra comment section to talk about your syllabus a little bit. Like they're still getting you know, accustomed to all Indian syllabi. So like, you know, definitely take some time and take the SAT and ACE SAT and ACE subject SAT as well. So we have, uh, Sid and I have very, very different journeys about getting into NYU. For the longest time, NYU was my top school. Um, I chose to ED there. Um, I didn't really have any other school that I was thinking, of, like any other school that I was thinking about EDing to. Um, I think except like, 10, but like, that's fine. I know you was a better choice anyway. Uh, I only applied to five universities. Um, I, I applied to UIUC, Penn State, IU, NYU, and U Virginia. But again, because I got early, I didn't really need to do anything. I did a bunch of weird things in my application process that I think thought was going to help me. You know, I went to LinkedIn and I had NYU all admissions officers like named next on another window. And I went and added all of them. I'm like, all message them on LinkedIn. It, it didn't amount to much, but I just tried to do it. Um, I cold emailed a professor to try and get into his good books, and you know, he just never responded. Uh, I spent a really, really long time on my NYU essay. I think like my extracurriculars were um, like my top extracurriculars are pretty good, but after that, it got very, very average, and my I my school grades weren't too great. My essay was definitely the thing that catapulted me to getting to NYU. Like I spent a lot of time on my essay. I had like nine rewrites or something like that. And um, that's like, that was the most excruciating part about applying to NYU. I did a lot of research and I'll get more into the essay later on towards the end of the presentation. But um, yeah, I spent, I spent like, I don't know, like two hours a day on research or like, no, like that's an exaggeration. Like one, an hour a day on research for two, three to four days before actually starting my essay. I really, really wanted to find out why NYU was perfect for me. And again, I'll touch upon that later on. Um, and in terms of deadlines, because I feel like this is a very, I don't know, the, the couple of people that I've talked to, like we've talked about deadlines quite a lot. And um, in terms of deadline, I finished my Common App essay I finished writing it in July, but I finished the final draft by August. And I started, I finished my call specific essays like for my early action by mid-November, except for like Penn State. I think I did that on Halloween. 
So that was very fun. But most of the, but like NYU, for example, I was done mid-October. Um, UIUC, I was done mid-October and U Virginia, I was done mid-October. Um, if you guys haven't started, please, 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 please start as soon as you can, because essay writing is genuinely the most painful part about applying to colleges. Um, Sid, you want to go over your... So uh, I think I have a very, well, unconventional journey, at least getting to NYU, because as you can see, NYU was not my top choice. Uh, in fact, NYU was my last admission, like it was the last admission I got to know of. And up to the point I got my NYU decision, I thought I was going to go to UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, so I applied to 13 universities, um, Yale restricted early action. UMish and Chapel Hill in the early round um, and I got into Chapel Hill and I I could probably tell you that I got rejected or waitlisted and then rejected by Yale, Columbia, Northwestern, Cornell, U Chicago and there's actually more universities that didn't really fit if I wanted to get all this type there um, but see that's the thing right I think that's interesting because if you look at my um, my statistics and my ECs and you think that a university would be a good fit. Another university of the same caliber may or may not operate on the same, on the same guidelines. Uh, once I got rejected by Columbia, Northwestern, and UChicago, I figured that NYU was a no-go for sure. Uh, there, there was no way that NYU would take me if these other universities didn't. And I think that's where the why NYU essay helped. But my why NYU essay was about NYC, which is generally not recommended. So I can't even tell you what part of my application would have convinced them to let me, you know, come here. But I think it had a lot to do with my Common App essay. Uh, that I can say confidently, because my Common App essay was about my academic interest in finance and economics, uh, married with my general passion for graphic design. And I spoke about how I built a graphic design business in Hyderabad. And I think that really resonated with what NYU is about. It's opportunistic. It wants students to go out there and do more with their life in terms of what they're actually interested in academically in the classroom and what they enjoy doing outside the classroom. And the reason I was able to make my Common App essay, well, in my opinion, such a good read is because like Akhil said, I started early and I finished early. Uh, it was interesting to see how my Common App essay evolved over time. And if you haven't started, yes, please do. But if you have started, it's important to give yourself time to detach from your essay, uh, in my opinion. I think it's important to write, get your thoughts on paper, maybe draft, draft your paragraphs and your sentence structures. But you should not obsess over your essay in the last few days because it won't give you time to sit back and reflect on whether you're missing something, on whether you could be condensing something to give yourself more space, or whether something's not necessary to be there in the first place. Um, giving yourself time to reflect is extremely important. And this sounds very cliche, I know, but I cannot, I cannot like emphasize the importance more uh, because as cliche as it is, many students tend not to do it. And that makes a clear distinction between what a good, thought out time taken essay is and what a deadline based essay is done in the last you know five to six days before the application deadline um, and yes like Akhil I wrote emails to admission offices I got zero responses uh, and I've heard of students who get responses or get some sort of recognition so like there's no harm in doing so as long as you're respectful uh, but don't have your hopes high and don't think that don't get demotivated when you don't get a response. It's just an extra step that we tend to do. And it, it may work, it may not, but it doesn't do anything to harm your application. Um, oh yeah, also guys, just leave your questions in the chat. Uh, we, I think we skipped over a question. Uh, shoot, my bad. I think we skipped over a question accidentally. Um, so how are the professors there? So we, we again, we're only in our first, first sem, so the, but the professors that I've had are generally good. I had a really, really, I had one really, really bad professor, but I managed to get out of her class and get into a, you know, a better, better professor's class. 
um, they're genuinely really, really passionate about what they teach. Like, I think that's something that really struck out to me. Like, I'm taking one philosophy class, and the professor is a very, very big Kantian philosopher. And she is genuinely incredibly passionate about, you know, ab about what she teaches. And she teaches very well. Same thing with my with one of my staff professors. Um, they're very, very well versed with what they're teaching and super, super smart. Uh, we haven't gotten to any business classes yet, but there are a couple of professors uh, like Scott Galloway and Ashwat, uh, Ashwat Damodaran. And these professors are very well reputed in like Scott Galloway is the uh, HOD of marketing and Ashwat Damodaran is a professor in finance, risk management to be more specific. And he's very, they're both very well reputed and very good professors. Uh, class sizes vary. So right now, because Sid and I are doing a lot of requirements, there are a lot of people in our classes right now. I think there is one class called the Science of Happiness that has around uh, 400 people, but yeah, it's a massive class. For me, my class size is very, uh, my smallest class is 12 people, I think, um, because of COVID reasons, because of social distancing reasons, it's 12 people. And my largest class is around um, 100, I think, for, is my stats class. Um, so do you want to answer that question as well? Yeah, uh, firstly about professors, I think any university will have good professors. I think like they need to, right? There's no way a university would survive without good professors. But if we're to go, if we're to go above and beyond and really compliment uh, a professor or a university's professors, I think the crux of it lies in what Akhil said, being the fact that these professors are passionate to an extent where they are not only driven to teach you the subject, but they're still exploring the subject themselves. And the university pushes them to do that. And I think it's really important to understand that between NYU as a university with the right amount of funding and the right resources, as compared to another uh, university, uh, NYU pushes their professors to continue to explore their careers simultaneously. Uh, and they really push it, they really further that cause. And I think as a byproduct of that, students get that sort of deeper insight into what a career in that um, subject looks like, into what a profession, uh, being a professional in that field looks like. Um, that's a very unique experience that you will only get at your relatively top tier schools, NYU being one of them. My class sizes vary from 15 people to 300. Uh, my intro to psych has 300 plus people in it. Of course, it's online. And my English class, writing the essay, which is a writing slash English class, has 25, um, sorry, 15 people in it. And it happens in person, again, with COVID-19 social distancing measures. Um, one, just a word of advice here, when you do research regarding, uh, when you do research regarding professors in universities, it's really easy to compliment professors. Um, you can't really differentiate, you know, just using the internet. I think it's important to look into the classes that you like, find the names of these classes, find the names of the professors, and then reach out to seniors at the school. Both Akhil and I did this when we were picking our classes. We called up a senior and we asked for their feedback. The best person to give you feedback on a professor is the student, is a student who took that class. So I think reaching out uh, and first-time communication is the best way to evaluate a professor. Okay, and now moving on. Um, there you go. So these are my initiatives and in extracurriculars. So um, I was the author of a book. Uh, it's called Bear and Losses. That's Bull, a Teenager's Guide to the Stock Market. Check it out. It's on Amazon. Um, this is definitely my bar my biggest high school project. You know, it took me like, I think it took me five months to complete. It's uh, not a very, very large book. It's around uh, 150 pages, small pages. So and this is very basic to the stock market, but it's something that I was passionate about. It's something I really wanted to do. So that was my number one. Um, I taught financial literacy um, as like um, part of my community service. I was part of this group under Intel Involved, which is like Intel's um, uh, CSR. And yeah, so that was something that I poured a lot of time into. I was a founder and president of the Econ Club. I was a member of student council at Greenwood. I was the vice captain, house vice captain, not 
the biggest position, but it was still a position. Uh, schools really look for leadership positions in your extracurriculars and like you taking initiative and you doing something, accomplishing something like that you wanted to start. And it's it's very important that you actually have those as your extracurricular. Um, okay. Do you wanna... I think, I think, nah, I, never mind. So then I was an intern at Mylan Pharmaceuticals. Um, I was, I was part of the strategy team, which is like this, uh, it was like, it was only two other people, like two other employees and me, you know, the very, very small group. And I did a lot of like economic analysis and like, you know, uh, just strategy, just like I ideas that the company could use to like, uh, increase their profits and increase market outreach and it was a really really fun internship that, that was a five week long internship um, and that took up like 80 percent of my summer so that was pretty fun uh, I also started an NBA and NFL podcast um, it's dead now but like when it was live it was a pretty fun thing to do um, I played basketball um, I played basketball for the state and I played basketball for like state tournament is, is an iffy term for it, but I play basketball for the state and I played basketball for my school. Um, I graduated grade five ABRSM piano. Um, when I say I wrote and produced an EP, I basically messed around with my cousin and we used garage band and made some, we made, we, we made music and I wrote really, really dumb rap lyrics over it, but it's still on SoundCloud. So it's pretty fun. And I took a seven week long course at the stock market Institute, which is, how I wrote my uh, my book. It was just like, I just learned about uh, investing, like, you know, technicals and fundamentals. And yeah, it was a very, very uh, helpful part of what, you know, it was a very, very helpful aspect of why I'm like, why I want to get into finance. Um, yeah, Sid. Um, so before I get into my uh, initiatives and ECs, uh, I would like, you know, I mean, whoever's listening to us speak right now, for both Akla and I, look at our spread of ECs and what you can learn or take away from this is one, the diversity uh, of the categories that these ECs fall into. So between uh, internships, uh, between major related stuff, sports, music, social work, um, these are all umbrella categories to work that is expected of you know, your average college student. And then it would be your responsibility to be an above average college student by solidly hitting on every category. So my, um, yes, my items are listed in that same categorical nature. So my first three, Graphic Design, Founders of Economics Club, and Internship at Mylon Pharmaceuticals, um, they're all related to my major. So Graphic Design, because I built a business around it. I used to charge people for my designs, and it was a viable business model that I explored in my Common App essay. I founded the economics club in my school, same as Akhil did in his. And again, just as Akhil did intern at Milan Pharmaceuticals, I did as well. We didn't know each other at the time, but we ended up doing the same things, which I guess is kind of poetic and goes to show that this sort of stuff is something NYU enjoyed. Um, yeah, I just want to I say that the internship at Milan Pharmaceuticals is in like two different cities. Like he did his in Hyderabad, I did mine in Bangalore. We didn't know each other. And only after uh, we were like, yo, so what were your ECs? He was like, yeah, so I had this internship at Milan. I was like, oh my God, me too. So it, it, was, it was pretty cool. But yeah, sorry, so go on. Yeah, no, no, it was. It was really nice. And I interned at Milan for eight weeks in their finance vertical. So their financial office at Hyderabad was their global vertical for their front-end banking division, import-export team, and all their manufacturing plants. And the reason I go into it with that detail is because these are the solid takeaways that you want to be describing your activities with in your Common App essay, or Common App application, sorry, because you have a fixed number of characters and, you know, forget sentence structure, forget fancy adjectives. You need to describe your activities um, with something tangible, something that makes it real to the college admissions officer. They're not going to be hunting for evidence for each and every single activity. They're going to be looking at how you reflect on what you've done. And if you've genuinely done something that's worth putting on your application, there's a certain way you would write about it as compared to someone who's over-exaggerating or falsifying their application entirely. Now, of course, it goes without saying that you are given some leeway, in all honesty, to be a little bit extra about what you've done. 
for example, Akhil's EP production, you know, the way you describe it can make it look like you've actively done music. Now, it's not that you're lying per se, but if it's something you're passionate about, just because you don't have too many professional things to show about it, you can put it in your activity section that you've done and you've dabbled in it. Uh, going on with mine, so the sport, uh, I played basketball, again, loosely in and out for my state once in a while. I graduated grade eight Trinity examinations for the piano. I was also a part of the student council, uh, the head boy of Trek International. Uh, and also, yes, uh, basketball and piano. So that's my sports and music thing, which I think is very standard. And it's advisable for any student to have at least one sport and one you know, soft skills such as music or any art-based thing to be in their activity section. Uh, the fact that I was the head boy, uh, the head of the team teaching debate, uh, these are leadership opportunities, like leadership roles for me. And again, umbrella category of leadership. So those are the two uh, things I did under that. Teaching English to orphans. So that's my social work in which I took time out on Sundays to go teach at an orphanage nearby. And my last two, uh, being the organizer, I think there's a typo, so being the organizer for TEDx Youth at Chirac and a secretariat member for Chirac MUN. These are, you know, club, club activities that I did within the school. And they're at the end of my, you know, end of my list because it, the order does matter. And since these two activities were more group based and less of myself as an individual, I had them at the end. The Common App does tell you that the order matters so that you put them in the order of the relevance to your application and to you as a person. So it is imperative, at least the foolproof formula that I can guarantee to you is first and foremost, put what you've done as an individual and what you've done as an individual related to your career or related to the major you're interested in. Then put what you've done as an individual socially or culturally. And then towards the end, you can trickle down to the group activities that you really enjoyed. Um, but I think that general approach to the list uh, shows a university that you have substance as an individual and you've also been part of the group activities and it just comes across as a more holistic application there. I agree with that. Although there's no like set formula for how you can get into college, um, Sid and I are like very normal students. Like we're definitely not like the most ex extraordinary people out there. So, uh, I, yeah, as it said, there's a very like, uh, like set way in which you put across your application. So yeah, you have leadership, the sports here and there, you have some sort of art, you have community service, and you know, just gen genuine passion that you have, and uh, it it'll work out well for you. It'll work out well for you. And uh, I'll get into this later on for general tips about the application. But you only have 150 characters to talk about, you know, what like skill, you, like you know, about each extracurricular, and that includes spaces. So um, you really, really don't have too much leeway to to like really get into the meaty details of it. So try and keep it as concise as possible. Like you know, everything you like. Um, okay, so what stood out to me was the fact that I was downtown. And now that I'm here, like I can tell you that it is literally the heart of NYC. You know, you see Empire State all around, no matter where you walk. Washington Square Park, which is like our quad in a way. For people who say that NYU doesn't have a campus, you guys are dead wrong. Like, yeah, we don't have a campus with walls or under, but doesn't mean we don't have a campus. Like our campus is literally just, I, it isn't even NYC because that's such a vague way of looking at it but we have something called Washington Square Park and all around that are only NYU buildings. And um, so that's like our quad and like every building around that is like, you know, just different buildings that we go to that you'd go to in a general school. And so there's a lot happening and that's what really stood out to me when I was applying that. NYU is the most lively place. Like there's so much that happens in one given day that you'll never experience anywhere else in the world. Um, like Sid and I and our friend group in general, um, admittedly, this was, this was during COVID, um, but we social distance wore masks and everything. But yeah, we went to Brooklyn one weekend and we, another weekend we took cycles and we cycled all the way downtown to like World Trade Center and like, um, like Battery Park where you could see that. And we took like really nice pictures and, and, you know, you can do something new every weekend. You can do something new every day. Like we, at 11 PM, we went out for ice cream and then. When we're coming back, we like took a pen and we threw it, and then we just walked in whatever direction the point the pin 
like the tip pointed us to and it was genuinely the most fun that i've ever had that you can't have anywhere else except in new york city and it's it's great and you know we're 20 minutes away from wall street so like great uh, internship and career opportunities for me uh when um i heard this from uh not from a per- person in a senior year right now but like when companies like goldman sachs and jp morgan like go to different schools for internships they like come to nyu first because we are right there like they'll come they'll and like we it's easy for us to like just sign up on a list first and we're given a lot of preference especially to like big banks like goldman sachs are given a lot of preference um nyu is also a huge research university it's very underrated in the fact that it has so many research opportunities there's something called the NASDAQ Derivatives Project that I wrote about in my essay that you know I can do in my junior year, something that's immense interest to me, and something called SPUR, which is the Stern Program for Undergraduate Research. I wanted to apply for it this year, but I, this time, but I couldn't because I'm only a freshman. But there was a really cool research opportunity where you know you use mobile phones to track um, human movement in a pre-COVID and post-COVID. Um, era and draw comparisons for consumer behavior and I don't know the entire thing was just super super interesting to me uh, and they have so many research opportunities it's actually crazy when you actually come here and you look at everything so you also get huge research stipends and you know they gen their endowment fund is largely dedicated to research and it's it's great um we have a lot of clubs like a lot of clubs like I don't know like even 5% of all the clubs that are there. You have comedy clubs, you have clubs for cookies, you have clubs where you can just draw, you have clubs, you of course have professional clubs, like you have clubs for accounting, for finance, for marketing, for um, for consulting, for economics, for bio. You have so many clubs and it's crazy. Like I, like I knew there were a lot of clubs before I was applying and now when I come, came here and attended like, uh, club like club nights and you know where each club did their presentations there are so many that it's so hard to keep track of what you actually want to join um there's just like admittedly covid really messed everything up but like without covid this would be so much time to just have fun and meet different people and clubs like give free dinners and free lunches and it's um it's a lot of fun like it's a lot of fun and so that's what's standing out to me more and more now so, Sid? Yeah, like I mentioned before, I think the fact that NYU was in NYC was the primary thing that you know drew me to the university. Um, and like Akil said, a lot of people say that we don't have a campus. Uh, but I mean, unless you, if, if the definition of a campus is, is four walls and a gate, then sure, we don't have that. Um, but we have everything you'd expect of a community within a campus, which is the proximity of our buildings, the fact that if you step outside, you may be on a public street, but it's only NYU students. Every Starbucks, every Dunkin' Donuts, every restaurant in a two block radius will be frequented by NYU students. And our ID gives us discounts, if not freebies. And it just it's just so nice to be out in the real world, um, allowed to be an individual in the real world and not, you know, in this little hub of, of a typical campus. Of course, that may work better for some students. Um, in all honesty, I know there are some people who move away from NYU because they want that sense of security within a campus that has four walls. Not a literal sense of security, I meant the security of knowing that you're always gonna be surrounded by only university students and it's always your people wherever you go. Now, given that NYU tries so hard, they put a lot of effort into really creating um, a, a university atmosphere on these public roads, right? You see NYU police officers, NYU public health safety officers, um, you've got NYU volunteers, they're just everywhere. And it's so overwhelming. My first few days here, like I would be on the street, like on the public street, but everywhere I looked, it was a college student or a group of college kids or people taking a class in the park. So it's a really nice, a nice way to grow as a person, really find who you are in the city. Again, a cliche, but I just think all the cliches tend to come true, which in itself is a cliche. And secondly, um, I was inspired by NYC's sense of opportunity uh, because it is impossible to not find something to do here. 
if you want to be a barista in your first semester, do that. If you want to intern as a junior accountant, then do that. It, it, it's everything's in front of you. The Wasserman Center, our, the Wasserman Center, you can do your own research into it, but it's our like career guidance uh, center for undergraduate students. It, they show us, you know, internship opportunities, part-time jobs, research opportunities, and you go to them. If you can tell them what you want, they'll have a choice for you. And they'll work with you on your application, your interview. And, you know, it's more than likely that you'll get it. Because like Akhil said, we are the biggest private undergraduate institution. Our population is enormous. But in light of that, in light of this number of students we have, we have, if not equivalent, a greater number of opportunities. Because NYC's employment for students, be it in part-time roles or eventually full-time roles, is immense. And the chance that you'd have to move away from NYC to secure a job is highly unlikely. Uh, without having to compare exactly, in most universities, you know, your job opportunity might take you away from the city. Or if your university is on the outskirts, you might, again, move away from that towards the heart of the city. We're already there. And so when you come to a place like NYC and you study at NYU, all of this opportunity, all of these all of these people, the network, it essentially comes to your doorstep. All you have to do is reach out and work with it. Okay, so um, just a couple of questions before we move on. If I didn't get it into NYU or media, what were my next top choices? Uh, okay, you know what? Yeah, fine. So my college list overall is like UPenn, NYU, CMU, Northwestern, Georgetown, and um, something else. And there was like UIUC, U Virginia, um, Wash U, Boston College, a couple of schools here and there. But yeah, my next top choice was definitely like, I mean, seeing next top choice is UPenn is weird. And that wasn't a school that I ever thought I was going to get into. I just want to put that across. But that was like the school that I really wanted to get into, if not NYU. Um, so yeah, that's my answer for that. If I didn't get into ED, then I was going to apply to like CMU, Northwestern, Georgetown, um, UPenn, and hope for the best. Um, I'm in a business school now, and yeah, Sid and I, neither of us took business at either in IG or in IB. Um, I know there's a certain, like, I know I was thinking a lot about this in high school, like, okay, if I didn't take business, then would business schools not consider me? That's not true at all. They just need to see that even if you aren't taking that subject, there's still other ways you can demonstrate the passion, you know, in business or whatever you want to do. Um, you don't need to take that, like, taking the subject is like 2% of interest. It's, you ever want to quantify things like I mean it's a it's, it's not necessary at all you can take bio and chemistry and like not take physics but as long as if you're still interested in physics and you show that to your extracurriculars and your essays then you know you're good um okay uh are you allowed to take classes across different schools uh yeah yeah you are the um majoring and minoring like is a little bit different. So if you like, uh, we're in Stern, so we can't have another minor in Stern. We can only minor with CAS. Um, and I don't know, there are a couple of like weird combinations like that, but overall electives, we can do absolutely whatever we want. Um, transferring to majors though, that's a, that, that's, a, that's a bit different. You can't major across any school you want. So like you have that freedom across uh, like CAS and like Steinhardt, and um you know school of dentistry and school of nursing for example but like stern and tish are like um are like don't allow that if you're in ces and you want to major in something at stern you'll have to go through an application process to do so like an nyu application process to do so it isn't something you can just you can take courses there but you can't switch to a major in stern or tish without applying and, and um some yeah, sorry, Sid. Sid, also, can, can, Sid, can you also address um, financial aid at Stern? I'll do that. So it's important to note that uh, when taking different classes, there's a difference between just taking classes as electives and actually looking to major and minor in them. When it comes to majoring and minoring, you should work with your academic advisor who will be appointed to you after you get here. Um, depending on your choice of subjects, there are some very niche choice choices that they will allow, but I will be honest, there are a lot of choices they will not permit. Um, and okay, there's a question that just came in. It's along the same lines. Can you double major across two schools? Again, yes, you can. 
while there are certain restrictions. So if I, as a student in Stern, want to major in economics at CAS, the first thing that they would look at is, well, my GPA, my ability to handle my coursework here. And if I talk to my academic advisor about it, if I'm not wrong, they will allow me to major in eco at CAS as well. However, if an econ student at CAS wants to major in business at Stern, which is the exact opposite of what I would be doing, that would present them, they would present them with another application process. So between colleges in, in NYU, uh, between the School of Arts or like co the College of Arts and Sciences, CAS, the Stern School of Business, Steinhardt or Tisch, the School of Arts, um, there are certain combinations that they will allow based on the difficulty. There's more so combinations that they won't, and you'll need to prove your caliber to get that. Um, double majoring within your school, however, definitely more likely. Uh, there are some tracks that uh, will not allow that, such as bio or the pre-med track, because I'm sure if you're looking to go into that, you know that it's a heavy course load um, major, and looking to the double major when you get in for bio or to be on the pre-med track will definitely be difficult. Okay, I'll just clarify that. Um, getting into NYU for a major and switching that same major to be something else, it's allowed. Like you don't, you're, not, you're not legally bound to the major you got in for. However, the major you wanna to switch to, they'll only allow it if they think it matches uh, the, general, the general academic you know, academic profile that you presented. If you get into NYU for a financial, economic, or business major, and you tell them you want to switch to a bio major, they're definitely going to ask you to explain your thought process, a very informal interaction, but they are going to ask for an explanation. And if you want to switch majors in your first semester, they will allow you to do so. But keeping your major and seeking a double major, like uh, Mohit asked, that's what will present you with more complications. So um, Maddie's question about switching majors, you're definitely allowed to do so, but don't think that you have the ultimate flexibility to get in for one major and apply for a major in a completely different school and just you know, move around or swim around you know, colleges as, as the term goes. Um, to financial aid, still... because I didn't apply for, no, to say financial aid, I didn't apply for FAFSA, so you talked about financial aid. Yeah, but before we move on to financial aid, does anyone else have questions about majors or combinations as such? We can touch upon it towards the end um, when we do general questions. When it comes okay, to and, um, yeah, some, sorry, just one thing. Yeah, some tips for studying for the SAT, by the way, we'll touch to it. We'll talk about towards the end. That question was not missed. We'll talk about it in the general application tips. But yeah, so talk about financial aid because I didn't apply yeah. for financial aid. I didn't fill out my FAFSA, but it did, so. So um, there's two documents, uh, one for U.S. citizens and one for non-U.S. citizens. However, U.S. citizens will fill out both either way. There's the CSS and there's the FAFSA document. So FAFSA is only for U.S. citizens. Uh, you need to have a social security number and your parents need to have a social security number. And um, CSS is for international students and those who do not have um, a U.S. citizenship in hand. How these uh, documents work is that you will submit your financial situation, your monthly income, your parents' uh, general expenditures, your assets, basically anything and everything that is on your tax returns in the United States of America, you will self-report and also make available the tax return filing itself to the university. And what they do is it's, it's a formula. They evaluate your need, your current and future expected need for money to come to that university. Um, now, I received a scholarship to come to NYU, and there's a distinction between financial aid, which I also received, and a scholarship. Both require the provision of your financial details through the FAFSA and through CSS. They will not give you money if they have no idea about your financial setting or your family's financial setting. So first, the scholarship. A scholarship, can be obtained through one of two ways. You can either apply for a scholarship explicitly through a third party resource. Um, and if they think it's worth investing in your college education, then they'll provide you with the scholarship. Secondly, what I did was nothing. I just applied and based on your academic uh, profile, based on what you have going on in your application to incentivize you to show up to the university, they might offer you a scholarship. 
And it's more likely that this happens in the regular decision round rather than the ED rounds. Because if you're to get into a university through the ED round, you have no choice but to come to the uh, university. If you apply an RD, however, you still have a choice. And so the university might provide a scholarship to incentivize you to show up. Now, secondly, federal aid, which I think more people will have questions about. Federal aid is money provided to you uh, on your university bill. So it's deducted from your fees, but it's provided by the government. And it's always in the form of a loan. So it works with three players. So there's you and your family, there's the government, and there's private uh, organizations or loan providers, as you'd call it, in America. So the government establishes the federal aid office, evaluates your need for money. They will give you an amount that they think you're entitled to, usually about um, anywhere between $3,500 to $10,000 in the first year, and the amount increases every year. And they will outsource your need for that cash to a third party loan provider. You will enter a legal agreement with the third party loan provider and you will be liable to pay back your loan over a course of anywhere between 10 to 30 years based on the payment plan you pick. And interest rates and all are subjective to where the economy stands at the time. Um, but in general, to sum up, you need to fill out your FAFSA and CSS profile at the earliest be very careful with the financial details you provide make sure they are accurate to the T. Make sure you're submitting your tax filing permission access to them. Speak with your parents about it, of course. Um, and be very attentive about communication you get back from them because they're simply gonna email you saying approve client and you'll get another email with your loan provider and you need to work with the loan provider uh, to establish over what period of time and what principal amount you'll be paying that loan back for. In light of all of this, getting financial aid from NYU as a university itself is highly unlikely uh, because NYU doesn't tend to give out money in the admissions round. They're more likely to give you money when you apply for a scholarship after one year in the university. So as a freshman, you can finish two semesters and apply for a scholarship using your GPA that you've accumulated over the course of one year you kind of prove to them that, look, now that I'm here, I'm, I'm making use of my time. I'm being the student I told you I'd be in my essays. And that's what, it, that's what pushes the university to help you at that point. They're unlikely to give you money uh, beforehand, before you even come to the university. And this is simply because there are enough people who end up coming to New York University without money that NYU doesn't need to dig into its pockets to push more people to show up in the regular decision round, um, you know, to have their undergraduate class at a decent size. So uh, in another student who I was mentoring privately, my, we, the financial plan we came up with was push through the payment of the, yes, extravagant 70 to 80K for the first year. And after that point, make sure you're driven and motivated to apply for a scholarship or financial aid from the university using the academic progress and stellar, you know, stellar academic performance you've showed in the first year. And that's what'll push the university to give you money after you've come for one year. If there are any more okay. questions about financial aid, you can reach out to me privately or we'll talk about it more at the end. Yeah, uh, if you have any other questions, just put it in the chat box about financial aid, majors, um, SAT, just absolutely anything. Like you can also text us privately um, if you don't want, like, I don't know, I always had this fear that, oh, what if my question gets judged? Um, Sid and I don't judge anyone at all. So, you know, and if you don't want anyone else to look at your questions, just text us privately and we'll just respond uh, without, you know, mentioning you. Oh, okay, we're all over here already. So the YNYU essay, oh wait, okay. So we're almost done with the presentation, but so for the YNYU essay, again, like I said, this is like the most important part of my essay. Oh, sorry, of my overall application. I spend a lot of time on researching. Um. I'd say just have fun with it. There is no like, um, there, there's no set thing for this. There is no MLA formatting. You need to do Times New Roman size 12, double space, nothing. Like you just have fun with it, do whatever you want. Like I wrote a letter, like that's how free I was with it. I never, like, I never went, so this is why I want to go to NYU dot, dot, dot. I made it seem like this is a, like, like 
a love letter to NYU. So I was just like, oh, dear NYU, you know, you've been the school, you've been the apple of my eye for as long as I can remember. That isn't what I said, but like, it was something along the lines of, it was dear NYU and it was yours ever admiring, ad admiringly, Akhil. It, it was just a fun essay that I just had a lot of fun writing. Um, just have fun with all of your essays. Like I, like, I feel like we'll talk about this in general application, but for why, like, just have fun with your essays. So yeah, so for my Y and my USA, I spent a lot of time researching. Um, I talked, I made things that were specific to me. I didn't talk about New York City at all. That was like um, the big, the most advice that I got from my seniors who got into NYU or that people that I talked to went to NYU was I just do not mention New York City as a thing because again, NYU receives like a hundred thousand applications or you know, not, okay, not a hundred thousand at UCLA level, but like 50,000, 60,000 applications. And out of those, like 70% of them go, okay, so I want to go to NYU because of New York City. Like no one really cares about the university aside from the fact that it's in New York City and NYU hates, you know, those kind of applicants. Just like um, talk about stuff in NYU that you like specifically and don't do like some surface level thing. Don't do like okay, I want to go to NYU because it offers a BS in business, right? Because like that's very, very surface level. You aren't really showing your interest. Really dig deep and find stuff that you really like. Like when I was looking at university, when I was looking at NYU, I went and downloaded, like I went to the public search course which is like on something called Albert. Um, if you guys are applying to NYU, you should check that out. There's a public course list. It's A-L-B-E-R-T. Like, you know, just search that up on Google, NYU Albert. And um, go to the public, like, and that's what I did. And I found some courses that I liked. I downloaded their, you know, I downloaded the documents about that course. And I talked about it in my essay. Talked about professors that I wanted to, you know, mentor under. I talked about uh, a NASDAQ derivatives project. I talked about the study abroad programs. And another really important thing about NYU that we probably should have touched on, like touched upon about what makes NYU so special is its immense networking ability. Like. I think NYU is, I don't know, in all schools that I applied to, no, or all schools that I was looking at, no school ever campaigned for networking as hard as NYU does. You know, they'll take the time to schedule coffee chats for you. Like, you know, if you just want to talk to somebody, they'll do that for you. you they'll organize so many like events where pe people from all around, like different companies, you know, different backgrounds will come and speak to you about their life and their profession. They give you the ability to like text them on like, you know, text them on LinkedIn and go, hey, I just watched you talk about this, 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 and I'm really interested in this. So, you know, how about I come work for you over summer? Like, and, and, and NYU does this so well, and there's no other school that I know. And like, I don't know, in school, like no school campaigned as hard for networking as NYU does. So I talked a lot about that. I talked about how I'm a very, very, um, like I'm a person who really enjoys speaking to people and talking to new people, and understanding them. So, uh, I talked about how NYU gives you the opportunity to do so. Again, the fact that it's in New York City makes it easier for you to meet different, different people. And so you know, talk about, you, I talked a lot about that in my essay and networking opportunities, like a whole bunch. And also NYU also prides itself on its large student population, which gives rise to, you know, you meeting new people. And this isn't for networking, this is just to improve you as a person. You know, if all your friends are the same, then you're not gonna be any different, right? You only improve if you like meet new people and learn the better things from them so and, and you know I've actually become a lot better since I've come here like I've grown up a lot and like I've genuinely met people that I wouldn't have met otherwise like I don't know it's just a huge school and you know you really have you do have to push a little bit harder to socialize I will admit that's a little bit drawback of NYU it isn't that people aren't friendly it's just that it's a big school so you'll get so it's easy to get lost in the crowd you really need to take the time to say hi to people in an elevator or like you know meet like see someone and like in a line and just start start a conversation up and uh yeah I, I'm sorry I just I just digress a little bit um but yeah so from a line on US I talk a lot about networking I talk a lot about internship opportunities I talked a lot about research I talked about the uh, clubs that they offer I talked about the courses that they offer and I was very specific with it I think that's another thing that really made my essay good was that I was specific with what I wanted I didn't just say I want clubs I said I want to join the investment analysis group which is a club that NYU has I didn't just say I want to study a course that you have I said I want to study risk management under Professor Dumbledore I didn't just say you know I didn't just say I want like 
I, I want to do research. I said I want to study and then after I grew this project. Just be specific with it, be concise with it. Because again, it's 400 words. It's very easy to like go over the word limit and just make it you, just be friendly with it. Um, and I'll move on to general tips for application season. Uh, so I'll just start with answering uh, the question on SATs. Uh, what I, so I took the SAT twice and what I found most helpful, like what I found was to be different the first time and second time was that don't rely on outside um, SAT prep services. Like I, that's what I did and I really regret that I did it. You know, you have something like Test Rocker, you have, I'm just going off what I know in Bangalore, you have Test Rocker, you have Reviser, yeah, but the, the, these were, they were so unhelpful. Like, I don't know about Reviser because I didn't go there, but Atharva and um, this test rocker were genuinely so unhelpful. Either it's better, like everyone that I know that scored well didn't go, like most people that I know didn't go to any of these. They just studied by themselves. And it's very, it's just easy to study by yourself. Just buy, you know, use, um, wait, what? yeah, use College Board, the book that they give. Use uh, Kepler, use Princeton Review. And, you know, just really take the time to work hard in that. Like the, Actual questions are not that hard. And they're like, it's very, very easy, the English and the math. The English is slightly trickier as Indian students because we aren't well versed in that form of English, but still very simple. You know, it's like uh, the more and more you do it, you kind of develop a instinct for answering questions. And the more and more, it's just the more you practice, the better you get at it. Um, just buy books and practice in a test setting for a couple of them. So the advice that I always give to people ask me about how to study for SAT is, Use Kepler and Princeton Review as something you can just do in your spare time. You know, you don't need to like, you know, you can listen to some music and just answer questions and get a feel for the questions and, you know, work them out, you know, try and get better at English while you're doing it. But then like every, like over the weekends, right? Like, and I think now because I is getting close, this should in, like increase like, you know, in frequency, but uh, we dedicate like three hours and sit in your room quietly, ask your parents to not disturb you, put your phone away, put your laptop away and just, you end the paper, answer that question and time yourself doing it. And you're gonna get much better at it. Um, how important do you think a counselor is in the application process? Your guidance counselor school is the, one of the most important parts. Like develop a good relationship with your guidance counselor. I had an incredibly good relationship with my counselor who you know, sent my applications to school. And um, yeah, it was, um, she because each counselor has a letter that they have to write like about you to the school so aside from letters of recommendation from your professors or from your teachers at school your guidance counselor letter is probably one of the most important documents that uh people in your college are going to go over like I, I, admission officers are going to go over so definitely have a good relationship with your counselor you know and meet meet him or her every like very often so I, I like most people are required to like fill out a form about like what like and the counselor would just write their letter based on that form but because I knew her so well and she knew me so well I never need I didn't I forgot to submit that form but she didn't really care she just wrote the letter that she that you know she generally felt best applied for me because we met so many times um have a good have a so have a good relationship with the counselor because they are very very important whom did you give your essays for review so I gave my essays to like, it, okay, the way that I, again, recommend people to do this is work with both your parents on this. Um, again, they, they, they're also super interested and it's better that you keep them in the loop with everything that's going on. That's a big recommendation that I give. So whichever parent is like a lot more enthusiastic about your application process, work with them closely with your essays. Like keep sending it, keep sending each draft to them and then they'll make some corrections, make those corrections, send it back to them, make those corrections, send it back to them. Then when you feel like you have a vague idea of a final draft, then give it to your second parent for them to read over it. And, you know, because they know you best. And at the end of the day, these essays are nothing but your personality on paper. So send, give it to your other parent. They'll read over. They don't like something. They'll tell you. Then you go back to the drawing board and fix it up. Then when you reach a final draft that both your parents are happy with, that's when you send it to friends. Never be shy about sharing your essays. That's a huge, 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 huge thing. Never be shy about sharing your essays. Whether it's to, you know, a couple of people on this call know me personally, just send it to me, you know. I would love to take time out of my day and review your essay and give you really helpful feedback on it. Because at the end of the day, I want to see you do best, right? And so do all your friends. So just share your essays and 
ask them if this represents you best on paper. Never be shy about sharing your essays because that's genuinely the biggest blunder you can make. I understand some essays are very personal to you. So don't share them with everybody, but definitely share them to a couple of close friends because you really need to do that because it's very important that you do that because you're not your, because you're not your best critique. It's people who are closest to you that can best critique you. So just, just work, you don't want to be biased when you're doing this. Just really do that. What factors did you consider for compiling your college list? Okay, I'll let Sid answer this as well, but me, I considered internships, I considered clubs, and I considered whether the college itself offered finance as a major, because a lot of schools don't, like a lot of schools don't. None of the, uh, none of the UCs do. Um, sorry, just give me a second. That's fine, I'll, I'll, I'll close that later. So none, so none of the UCs do. Um, a lot of schools that I wanted to apply to, like I, I don't think even USC does. So just make sure that it offers your major, look at the clubs that they offer, look at and look at internship opportunities that they offer. Okay, and I said you can also answer that question. What facts did you consider for compiling your essays? Yeah, thank you. Um, I think that when it came to picking my college list, the first thing I looked at was whether or not uh, recruitment after college was over was something I could, you know, have that faith in, have confidence in. Because just as your high school builds a reputation that colleges look at, universities look at, universities build a reputation that employers look at. And so, you know, aside from student life, aside from student happiness, uh, it was important to me that a university, regardless of how famous it was uh, to me as a high schooler, how famous was it to employers after the fact? Um, how reliable is a university when it says it produces top caliber uh, employees uh, for recruiters to come look at during the recruitment stages, right? Beyond that, after I looked at what life after college would look like, I was very basic about picking the factors that affected my college list. Um, I looked at, you know, what students had to say about school policies, about freedom, uh, about you know being able to do what they want, go around the city, move around, flexibility essentially. And then of course, I think everyone should look into coursework, coursework professors, uh, whether or not the majors they want are being offered. But that's very generic stuff. And I think, I mean, to be the bare minimum of a researching student, you do need to look into that. It's very hard to put a pin into what the best factor to consider is. I mean, I wish I could give you an ultimate answer, but different people care about different things. Some students genuinely care about the weather, right? And weather affects what they, where they apply to. Some students care a lot about food. Um, as a vegetarian, I do struggle with, uh, with food here in New York City because, well, meat is a standard. Uh, to a student, if that mattered that much more to a student, then they may not have applied. So it's important that you find not only your academic niche and contentment with the university, but you are gonna be spending four years alone, away from you know, any family for that matter, uh, over this, overseas essentially in a new country. It's important that you look at what matters to your, to your life really. What, what sort of livelihood would you be happy with in terms of all the adulty things, you know, if, if you would, with respect to food, finance, cost of living, yeah, and this the sort of life that you'd want to you'd want to live. Uh, make sure you pick your university based on that. Um, I'm getting a couple of questions about third party scholarships. So, as a U.S. citizen, I was uh, I was applicable. Like I met the benchmark to apply to scholarships here through third party sources. Now, in my explanation, when I said that the federal aid office will redirect you to a student scholarship organization you can reach out to them directly as well. Now there's a list, this list changes every year because these aren't firms and companies that do student scholarships for their entire lifetime. It's a business function as part of their loan out strategies. And so some tend to continue a few years, some don't. Um, but I do have the resource uh, to provide a link. Through the Inflow network, I could give, um, I could give the organization a few resources you could keep an eye out on their page i'm sure they can share it accordingly 
otherwise reach out to me uh, privately in some time and I will look into which companies are offering scholarships for your graduating batch. They will release those details sometime in November or December, if not already. Uh, we just got a question. Yes, I will share. What are some important things to consider while picking a major and minor? It's just what you're interested in, I'll be honest. Minors, don't worry about it right now. You're just applying to college. You have a lot of time to figure it out. Sid and I are still figuring it out. Um, and so, but picking a major is just what you're interested in at the end of the day. There is nothing too important. If you like what you're doing, then do it. Don't look for money. Don't look for fame. Don't look for anything else. Just do what you're interested in and money will follow. I'm pretty sure that's something my, my mom told me, but yeah, just, um, just do what you're interested in. There's nothing else you really need to consider. Um, other application, other general tips that Sid and I have are, um, we're like generally just put deadlines for yourself and work hard on your essays because essays are a very, very, very important part of your overall application. You know, it's almost November 1st. So if, please, if you're not done with your common app, get a little bit stressed out and finish it off because you really need to be done with it. And um, call specific essays, start sending them to your peers for review. Um, Sid and I are available for like, you know, I'll put our Instagram handles out there. Um, you can add us up on LinkedIn if you want. And uh, we'd love to, like, if you guys ever want like one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls, you know, you can just text us and we'd love to, we'd love to help you out because that we, I, I don't know, like I speak for both of us when I say that we genuinely love helping people out with any sort of college application. Like Sid is up at three in the morning for anyone who like anyone who needs any help, you know, adapting to Indian time and just calling them for an hour and a half, two hours, just helping them with stuff. And I, and, I, and you know, I do that for a couple of my friends as well, and I, we genuinely enjoy it. So reach out to us if you have any other questions one-on-one. -on -one. Um, other tips, uh, I covered SAT, covered essays, covered college in general. So if you guys have any other questions, just put it in the chat. I have, I have one last tip. Um, okay, so unless you're a student who's not begun writing anything, yes, then do get a little stressed to push yourself. But otherwise, another tip for application season is take care of yourself, like sleep. Like, I think that's really important. Um, as silly or generic as it may sound, students who, students who stay up till 4 a.m. writing just because they have work, uh, just because they need to write and they feel like, you know, writing is what gives them that sense of doing something. Please don't do that. If you don't have time to write today, then write tomorrow, plan out your schedule like that. If you stress write, you know, well in advance, if you're stress writing already, you are not going to produce good work. Students who produce good work are not those who sit for hours on end. It's for those who have hours on end to, get to, to, to not write, to think about what they've written, to take their time, to think, to just do something else, really. Um, because you're only human and the application season is not meant to be like IIT or JE training. It's just, it's just a consistent process. Writing some of your best work. Uh, I know it's, it might sound easier said than done, but do try to, do try to make it as easy as you can for yourself. Um, are there yeah, any writer's other block is a real thing. Writer's block is a real thing. And if you encounter it, don't worry about it. Everyone goes through it. Just take a little bit of time, take a walk, like get, get on Netflix and watch something for a bit and then start again. It's okay. Another helpful thing is when you're writing essays that I would do is I would like, even when I was like, no matter where I was, I'd either have my phone out or something. Like if I was in the bus or in the car or in a taxi or something, I just like like think about it like it's this is something you need to work hard for because I, like I, it sucks that our society is like this but college is a very very integral aspect of defining like where you end up at least in the beginning of your life right like if you, like of course success comes later if you work hard for it but like you want to at least make your life a little bit easier straight out of college so a good college and like getting into a good reputed college for whatever you want to major in is a very important aspect of that so you know, again, the success society is like this, but it is what it is. So just work hard for it, you know, just keep yourself preoccupied with everything college application. Yeah, there's a lot going on with the world right now, but 
what's important to you is getting into a good college or right? you don't want to disappoint yourself like I, I don't care about anybody else your parents will always be disappointed no matter what but like never just never disappoint yourself and get into a great college and you know just be happy with it because genuinely the happiness and euphoria that comes into getting into a school you want to get go to and you know actually going to that school is completely different you don't want to again you don't ever want to be disappointed so keep thinking about essays keep thinking about what extracurriculars you're going to talk about keep thinking about what college you're going to apply to and um yeah and you just have fun with it at the end of the day especially with your essays but yeah you're good um if you have any other questions reach out to us on instagram reach out to us on linkedin uh if you have any questions with, like shortlisting does anyone have any questions with shortlisting and also stay organized um keep an excel sheet with you know all your colleges with the dates you're going to apply to them with like you know a couple of their essays just try and stay or as organized as possible again i'd love to get like i can get into more detail over any sort of one-on-one -on -one chat any of you guys would want to have you know i could help you with your list as well so could sid so just reach out to us but as for an overall presentation that's it from me and sid so thank you all so much for listening and you know, I'm sure the guys at Info will take over right now. Yeah, thanks, guys. I think it's been a really fun and interesting talk. Uh, I think we can wait maybe for a few more moments if any other questions are going to come in. But otherwise, Akhil and Sudha, thank you so much for taking time out to participate in Inflow's College Shark series. Also for our participants, just a reminder, tomorrow we have a talk by Arpit. Uh, he's coming in at 7.30 p.m. IST to talk about his journey of getting into Harvard. So we look forward to seeing you then.